So, um, yeah, of course, this stuff doesn't all happen by chance. Um, it is a facilitated governance model. Um, each area board is a dedicated officer, um, a community engagement manager, whose role is to establish and sustain local networks, um, drive community engagement, uh, provide effective communications, um, and facilitate the delivery of um, community outcomes. Uh, and these offices are actually critical to the delivery of locality working. Um, they are true boundary spanners, as it says on the slide here. Um, they coordinate community area teams, offices drawn from the statutory, voluntary and commercial sectors. Um, and they also unblock those tricky multi-agency issues that hang around for ages um, by facilitating problem solving round tables. Um, where the community can discuss thorny issues with the various civic institutions involved. Uh, this process is both educational um, and instructive for everyone who's involved. Um, and there are many examples of where this has delivered um, practical consensus based solutions. And I can give you a, a quick example of this in action um, in uh, Chippenham, which is in the north of Wiltshire. The local area board received repeated representations from residents of a social housing scheme adjoining a council-owned car park. The complaints centred on the behaviour of boy racers, um, that's youngsters who were gathering in the car park late at night, uh, playing loud music, revving their engines, dropping litter um, and performing donuts, that sort of thing. And this was pretty intimidating for the residents. Um, so, and the council, uh, it didn't want to close the car park at night because a lot of people in the town use that car park overnight. Um, and they, the police weren't very keen to get involved because they didn't see it as a criminal uh, activity. They saw it as antisocial behaviour. So they didn't really feel that it was in within their remit. Um, so a round table was convened um, with residents, the police, council officials, uh, local area board representatives. And as a result of those discussions, the area board... Um, requested that the police uh, and the local youth workers attend the car park and, and talk to the young uh, car fans, um, explaining the problem and asking them uh, to find a location where their gatherings would not upset local residents and suggesting actually another car park adjoining to a sports ground. And to the amazement of everyone, um, the youngsters perfectly open to this, understood the problem uh, and moved quite willingly to uh, the other location and uh, it was a clear win for everybody. Um, and okay, let's look at another example, um, this time um, of where um, the, the area boards have had to deal with budget and funding reductions, which is obviously uh, an issue for everyone. I mean, like all councils in the UK, uh, which council has been making cuts to services for the last 10 years, and, and each year that has been getting harder and has a more dramatic impact on local people, um, so to ensure cuts are not imposed in an arbitrary man manner, um, the area boards are now central to the process. Uh, and cuts to rural bus services, particularly in a large county like Wiltshire, is, is, is a good example. I mean, the council um, needed to make uh, £800,000 saving uh, from its rural bus subsidies budget um, in 2020. Um, and in the past, the officers would use a simple algorithm um, bus loadings um, divided by bus subsidy costs. Um, that would produce a, a ranking of bus services um, by use and cost and inevitably the ones at the bottom of the list would be cut. Um, so uh, now the algorithm is still run um, in the same way except the area boards are now um, given the decision in terms of which buses they would they would they think should be cut and this this enables them to take into account local factors and also the views of local people involved um, so that means that the cuts can be tailored a little bit more uh, to local circumstances um, and in many cases local parish and town councils um, have raised funds to protect their own local um, bus service um, and that's brought new resources uh, to the table um, and meant that there is more money available to support buses in Wiltshire. 
but has also seen um, the emergence of community-led transport schemes, such as the voluntary hospital drivers schemes, um, which are supported by grant funding from the area boards. And again, this further helps to mitigate budget cuts and shows that you know devolution does create more resilient communities. And one other thing it does as well is by involving local communities in the decision, decisions like this, the cut um, decisions relating to budget cuts, it does remove uh, undue political in influence from the decisions. Um, and I think you probably know what I'm suggesting there. So um, Wiltshire Council describes all this stuff, everything as um, community governance, um, a concept that grew out <clears throat> of the academic work of Professor Rod Rhodes uh, that was influential during the early years of this decade. Uh, this sorry this century um and and you're gonna have to forgive me here because i'm gonna commit a little bit of um philosophy so uh rod rhodes pictured here um had argued that the state was becoming atomized and the power in society be what was becoming diffused through complex governance networks he coined the phrase the hollowed out state um, and looked at how civic governance uh, operates in this sort of new environment. I mean, in the UK, the effects of austerity and the contraction of the state, um, particularly certain state institutions, has tended to support the, the view that Rhodes um, propounded. I mean, the state has certainly receded over the last two decades and vacated whole areas of um, civil society. Um, more and more civic powers are now outsourced to the voluntary sector, the economic partnerships, um, quasi-government government organisations. Um, and so our understanding now of uh, civic society has sort of shifted quite radically, and so has our concept of governance. I mean, to be effective now, local government needs to deploy far more nuanced governance skills. Uh, Rhodes describes this, uh, this role as meta-governance, and I know, you know, they would, uh, a professor of philosophy would use a term like meta-governance. Um, but meta-governance at its simplest is the way in which civic institutions use their collaborative and democratic influence uh, to coordinate, enable, facilitate, uh, and sometimes to control outcomes within comp complex civic um, social networks. And Wiltshire has sort of embraced this concept, recognizing that to actually affect positive changes, it must enable civic, civil society networks and communities to be the co-producers of the public goods. So, yeah, we took a bit of a heady turn there, but let's return to the nuts and bolts, which I'm much happier with. Um, what does this mean for everyday practitioners? Um, I mean, I've talked um, about the importance of creating opportunities for democratic participation and co-production. Um, in Wiltshire, this is provided by the community area boards. Local people attend these meetings, raise their issues, participate in the debates. They can even vote on quite a lot of the matters. However, we all know <laughs> that local government meetings uh, are, will never compete with the latest Smash TV box set. Uh, so we had to take a radical approach to the way we run democratic participation through meetings. Um, we deconstructed um, the uh, traditional meeting format. Um, actually, in fact, you could say that we actively attempted to subvert uh, the old committee system by setting things up in a whole new way. Uh, we set the meetings up coffee house style. We ditched the top table. We ditched the public benches at the back. We mingled people together. We play music. We have food. Uh, we include handheld voting units. We provide interactive activities such as participative budgeting. Um, we use top quality audio visual materials. Um, we also opened up the agenda, um, enabling the community to bring forward their own items. Uh, we advertised the meetings in an in almost maniacal manner. Um, we included a showcase slot for local community groups and businesses. Uh, we include arts um, uh, and we provide time for discussion and social interaction uh, before and after the meetings. Um, in fact, we tried to turn the whole meeting into an event. Um, and this, I think, surprised a lot of people, especially politicians and officials who were imbued with the old local government culture. Um, 
I mean, to aug augment the meetings and to extend the reach of our activities, much of the engagement work is now digital. Um, each area board has a Facebook, Twitter, I mean, X um, accounts and an open community blog. Um, collectively, these sort of platforms generate huge volumes of um, traffic across the county. I mean, over two million act interactions, um, positive interactions in a, in a typical year. Um, so, and also around 15% of the adult population of the county are now signed up to receive information through these networks. Um, and, and Wiltshire works really, really hard to facilitate um, participation. And it does take a lot of commitment, uh, effort, resources and to sustain it. Um, and I know that sounds expensive. Um, and this is obviously often where politicians and policymakers switch off. But if you think about it, um, justice would not exist without the enabling legal system, the thousands of lawyers and legal firms that facilitate the process. And that's expensive. Um, democracy too, uh, if it's to be valued and nurtured, uh, we need to invest in it. <laughs> you know? um, and Wiltshire puts in about 2.5 million quid a year into sustaining this process. Um, but actually, that is absolute peanuts compared to a one billion pound annual budget. So really, these things aren't inordinately expensive. And also, um, you know, by doing this, it's leveraging more resources and influence um, through the partnership approaches. Um, and actually, it's the partnership working with our major service partners that has really um, produce one of the most exciting features of our, our, our new system. And it's, it was <laughs> originally, it was called the Joint Strategic uh, Needs Analysis, the JSNA. Um, and that is such a dreadful, <laughs> dreadful jargon laden phrase that we had to come up with something a bit more understandable. So we call it the Our Community Math Matters. Um, and actually, as a side, language really does matter when you're uh, working with local communities. Um, and our Community Matters is a sort of an umbrella brand for a range of our uh, engagement activities. But at its heart is an innovative um, policymaking initiative that enables communities to set the agenda at both community and at strategic level. I don't know if that's going to surprise you there, but at, yeah, at strategic level as well. And every two years, the council and its strategic partners produce a comprehensive ana analysis of um, needs in the area. Let's um, see if I've got a slide here which might describe that. Yeah, that, that's a, an image there of the, the website that supports the, uh, the process there. OK, so um, the JSNA documents themselves are broken down thematically. So we've got themes such as health, safety, environment, young people, crime and disorder. Uh, and it, that has comparisons across the 18 community areas in Wiltshire. It also shows as changes over time. Um, and for ease of access, uh, the data is presented as, as infographics and charts, simple to read charts. But there's always a full analysis that sits behind it for, other, for if you really uh, want to read all of the data. Um, and that does inform, you know, public service decision making. Um, the data is published and a series of citizen assemblies, um, our community matters assemblies, are held to enable local people to consider the issues um, that have been raised in these documents and to select their own local priorities. 